Chapter 13 As they were about to cross an intersection on their way back to Dan's apartment, they saw Nicholas waving them down from the sidewalk. What on earth is he doing here at this hour? Gustavo blurted, pulling to the curb. No idea, Dan replied, lowering the window on the passenger side. Hi, Nicholas, what's up? Hello, Mr. Politano, I think we might need to have a talk. Didn't you say we were to meet you at the park tomorrow? Has something happened? Yes, yes, of course, I believe this is important, it can't wait, really. Seeing the elderly fellow's anxious face, Dan said, OK, then, why don't you get in and we'll go to my apartment? Opening the door and climbing out of the vehicle, he lowered the front seat to let Nicholas into the back seat. I'm very sorry about this, fellows, but you see, I had another dream while I took a nap this afternoon. What sort of dream? Gustavo asked, turning his head to the man before pulling from the curb. Oh, much too complex to explain in the confines of a car, Nicholas replied, but once we're settled in more comfortable surrounds, I will tell you everything. Dan and Gustavo exchanged a glance before Gustavo poured into the evening traffic once again. I assume you have copied the first clue of the directions onto the notepad? Damianos asked, looking at Gabby. I didn't, but someone sure did, she replied, handing the pad to Damianos. And what have you deduced from the first sentence? he asked. Nothing yet, Malou answered. But Gabby thought that since there were twenty-five pages to turn before we got to the first clue, Dan might have travelled twenty-five days, weeks, months or years into his past. She looked at Damianos pleadingly. Does that make sense? Yes, it does, a man's voice replied to Malou's question. He was dressed in a beige suit and stood beside Solangi, both radiant and as if peace itself enveloped their presence. I'm sorry, I must introduce myself. I am Damien, Solangi's husband. He smiled in the children's direction. You do remember Malou, don't you? Absolutely, Damien, and it's a pleasure seeing you again. Same here, but to come back to your question that your husband has gone back to a time equivalent to the number of pages preceding the first writing is absolutely possible. But could you tell us if these pages meant for us to be counting days, weeks, months or years? I couldn't be precise, Daniel, but God does not reveal his plans in such details, and for him they are minute details, you understand. But I would suggest we forget about days or even weeks. I would prefer saying the pages are to be counted or representing months or years. Wow, Malou said much louder than she expected. Is that even possible? I mean that Dan went as far back as twenty-five years? Yes, my dear, Solangi said. You must remember that any one's visit into one's past most often is not accidental. Everyone has a desire to return to the scene of some prominent event in his or her life. Yet, and before you ask, Malou, even though Dan seemed to have fallen, literally, into a past unknown to us, subconsciously it must have meant something to him. You mean even though his return was an accident, he must have gone back to a time and place where he experienced something important? Yes, Stefano, and although you or your siblings wouldn't be able to remember the event in question, perhaps your father talked about it on occasion, Damien suggested. What about the clue in these two sentences? Are they indications of the event then? Daniel asked. One step at a time, young man, Damien said. The first clue is often an indication of the location where the person has landed. Let's see this first sentence again, Gabby asked Damienos. Yes, of course. He handed her the pad. It says... Find the right key and you'll find the cardinal point of his destination. What do you think that means? She looked at her mother. I believe I should be of some help in that regard, Gabby, Damienos interposed. The two significant items in this clue are key and cardinal point. How does that help? Stefano asked. And when you say significant items, what do you mean? Ah, I see that you have your father's analytical mind. Very good, Damienos replied, smiling. Significant items means they are words to remember. Since it's only the first clue, we need to remember each of these significant words, if you prefer, until we have received the entire set of directions. OK, then, Daniel said. Where do we go based on key and cardinal point? Let me add, Damien put in, that some of these words are names of places, perhaps. Then it's time to go, Damien has declared suddenly, snapping his fingers. When Dan, Gustavo and Nicholas arrived at the apartment, Gustavo made a beeline for Dan's bedroom to deposit his bag and the few pieces of clothing he had brought with him, before joining Dan and Nicholas in the living room. Would you like a drink or something to eat? Dan offered, looking at Nicholas who had taken a seat on the sofa. Oh no, thank you. I have already eaten and what I have to tell you won't take long. Okay then, Dan said, sitting down across from the little man. What happened to you and how does it concern us? He shot a glance in Gustavo's direction. He had plopped down in the other chair beside Dan's. Well, let me begin by saying that yes, I have met Damienos as you gathered, same as you have. You mean you dreamt of him? 
Dan interposed. No, no, I, I mean not exactly. As I told you, when my wife was still alive, we took a drive to a town by the name of Pahokee at the edge of Okeechobee Lake. He advanced his body to the edge of the sofa, his cane still between his legs. Looking at you, Mr. Politano, I can see the place doesn't mean anything to you, does it? No, not at the moment, but a few hours ago I didn't even know I lived in this apartment. His eyes travelled around the living room, so don't be surprised if I don't remember anything of what I might have known before my accident. Yes, yes, exactly my point. I'm sorry, Nicholas, I don't mean to rush you or anything, but could you tell us why you're here, or why you needed to tell me something so urgently that it couldn't wait until tomorrow? Well, let me put it bluntly, then. You're not supposed to be here, Mr. Politano. Gustavo and Dan exchange a curious glance, and then switch their gazes to Nicholas, staring. I think you'd better explain what you just said, Nicholas, Dan stated, still peering into the old man's eyes. The thing is, Mr. Politano, I had the privilege of talking to Damien else on several occasions since I, myself, travelled to my past and could not return to my present. Okay, Nicholas, Gustavo said, opening his mouth for the first time since he sat down. Why don't you start by telling us who's this Damien else guy? Well, yes, I think you're right, Gustavo. As I was saying, my wife and I travelled to Pahokee, and there we found an opportunity to take a trip to our past. I won't go into details as to how we did it, but the result was that we didn't come back in due time, and both of us remained in our past until we lived our future and subsequently died. Now, now, Nicholas, Dan interrupted, a derisive smile crossing his lips. I'm sure you're quite alive at this very minute, unless you're telling us that you're a ghost, is that it? Nicholas shook his head. I know you think me a crazy old fool, as many people would, but I'd neither crazy nor a fool, I can assure you. He paused to look at Dan fixedly. If you wish to call me a ghost, it is of course your prerogative, but in reality I am a messenger, and I have been sent to let you know that you have fallen in a past that no longer belongs to you. And who would it belong to, may I ask? Gustavo interposed, visibly intrigued. If on the other hand you're saying Dan isn't supposed to be here, where should he be? And on the other, if you're saying this past doesn't belong to him, to whom does it belong? Nicholas stood up unexpectedly. First I would like you both to believe in my assertion, I am here, yet I am not. He snapped his fingers and disappeared before Dan and Gustavo's eyes. The two of them sat there, open-mouthed. Then Dan said, Are you sure Harrison didn't slip something in the coffee he served after dinner? Gustavo shook his head. No, I don't think so, Dan, and to tell you the truth, I've seen this sort of thing before when I was in the battlefield. But then I thought I was suffering from exhaustion, or I was dreaming while I was awake. Like hallucinations, you mean? Yeah, something like it, but the personage I saw then never stayed long enough to have a conversation. Anyway, I think we should listen to him, because the other thing is, I've heard of people disappearing unexpectedly around that lake. Everyone thought they'd drowned or something. So this may be another explanation. Well, if you think we're safe listening to this old guy, I'm, I'm with you, Dan said, lowering his head to his lap. When they landed, so to speak, Malou and her children were standing on a beach facing the ocean. Where do you think we are, Mum? Gabby asked, hanging on her mother's arm, apparently not wanting to let go any time soon. This is the first of your cardinal points, Damienos replied from behind them and walking along the water's edge. We are as far as east as we can be without crossing the Atlantic Ocean. What are we supposed to do here? Daniel asked, watching the waves roll gently onto the sand at his feet. Amazing, Stefano remarked. Have you seen how we're dressed? Everyone looked at themselves. They were all dressed for the beach. Their clothes were perfectly suited for the climate and environment. Yes, that's one of Damienos's tricks. He loves to dress people for the parts they have to play in their imagination, Mulu said. What parts are we supposed to play? That's what I'd like to know, Stefano said, picking up a seashell and throwing it back into the waves. Simple, Stefano, Damienos replied, a mocking smirk on his face. Maybe you need to go for a swim and find the key to your treasure. Hold on a moment, Damienos, Gabby interrupted. Because the last sentence of the clue is a warning, isn't it, Mum? She pulled the notepad out of her beach bag. Yes, it reminds me of my dream, remember? I told you about it at breakfast. I was in the middle of the ocean, watching the swell. And it says here, Do not stray toward the swells of the ocean of your memories, for they will be wasted errands, so it might be dangerous to venture offshore to find that key, don't you think? Gabby shot a querying glance to Damienos. 